the video for today is going to be a topic that is very frustrated very frustrating for police officers um, it's also a topic that's very misunderstood amongst members of the general public and even more misunderstood by people in the uh, legislator or lawmakers the topic for today is going to be domestic violence and responding to domestic violence calls. These calls are extremely frustrating for a variety of reasons. Um, the first reason being the majority of the time that I'm responding to a call that is listed as a domestic violence call, it's not domestic violence at all. It's not violence. It's barely even an argument. Um, that's because people will call 911 and they know there's certain things that they can say that will trigger a certain type of response by the police. Or at least it will um, trigger the dispatchers to write up the run in a certain way that will force police officers to respond in a certain way. They know that uh, domestic violence calls are high priority and uh, if there's a lot of calls holding on the board and they want the police out there right away, they're gonna call and make it sound like it's domestic violence. A lot of these calls are, um, I mean, they'll just call in and say, Johnny's being violent, so that'll get written up as a domestic violence call. Uh, one person will call in and say that the other person is putting their hands on me. Um, they'll say that he's threatening, he's threatening me and he has a gun. That's a very popular one. Um, a lot of times, especially the he's threatening me and he has a gun, you'll get there. And often, at least in the area that I've worked, it's two people who are intoxicated and they're insulting each other. So um, a, a very, very common thing is for one person to tell the other person, I hope you die. I hate you. I hope you die. And then the first person to call 911 knows that the other person owns a gun, so they're not lying. They're calling in and saying, he wants me to die and he has a gun, and that'll make the dispatcher believe that this person is being threatened with a gun. The officers arrive on scene and just two drunk people that are arguing. Um, another type of call that we get very frequently are uh, those people that are like a toxic couple. So you have uh, um, John and Jane who have been together for 20 plus years. They've known each other since high school. They're both addicted to drugs and alcohol. They get high every single night because they don't have jobs. Uh, the government pays their wages for them. Regardless if that's what you want to believe, I can tell you that that's the truth. They go out to the store and get booze, get a, get a couple rocks of crack on the corner, go back to the house. Um, get high and drunk some kind of argument will happen and one of them will hit the other person um, either one will hit the other person or they'll both start fighting and it's like a race to see who's the first one to call 911 then we get there um, the oftentimes both people will have cuts and scratches on them so we're unable to determine kind of the uh, the key word is the primary physical aggressor in these situations if the officers are unable to determine a primary physical aggressor oftentimes um, the whole case is just referred to the prosecutor's office unfortunately there's other cases where um, both people are drunk and stupid and they have some form of altercation but whoever is the first person to grab some form of weapon or whoever is stronger um, will significantly hurt the other person. And uh, so the police will have to show up, see, see person with injury, see person who did it, arrest person, take them to jail. That's a domestic violence charge. 99.9% um, .9 of the time, those charges are dismissed. They just never go anywhere. It's a complete waste of time. Um, it's very frustrating for law enforcement because we have these people who are in these relationships, I've, there's couples that I can name their, their first name, their last name, their spouse's name, where it's like on Tuesday, we arrested him on Thursday, we're arresting her. And this goes on for months and months and months and months. 
every single time this happens, they call and they're both claiming to be the victim and they both want the other person arrested. Um, it's incredibly frustrating as a police officer to have to respond to those kinds of runs. The third type of domestic violence run is the one where um, when police officers are talking to each other, we'll look at each other and say, hey, this is a good DV. Um, it's probably not the right way to talk about things, but it's just the truth. It's the fact of the matter. Um, if I look at my buddy, if he's, if I'm there first, I'm talking to one half of this relationship and my buddy gets there and I said, Hey, this is a good one. Go, go put him in cuffs or, Hey, this is a good one. We're going to be filing. They know instantly, Hey, I need to get to work. Like we've got a real victim here. We need to make sure we do this right. Um, It's almost depressing that the number of times where I've been on a good one where the victim doesn't want to cooperate. Um, these are the cases that the public generally thinks about when they think of domestic violence. And these are the ones that lawmakers think of when they think of domestic violence. They're not thinking of all those other, all those other cases that tie up all of our time and gum up the, the courts. Um, these are the ones that you, you know, you typically, you see, um, reenacted on TV and stuff like that. Um, I remember I had one a couple years ago where I can't get into all the details about what happened on this. Um, but I was talking to this girl, she was wearing a white t-shirt and her nose had been busted open so bad. Um, and her upper lip, there was like meat hanging down from her upper lip and her nose was bleeding so bad that she had blood just running down her shirt. Um, she was absolutely covered in blood and, you know, we're trying to get her to relax, trying to get her to, to stop the bleeding. We were trying to get her to go to the hospital. She refused to do all that. There's even a chance that one of her teeth might've gone through her lip, but she was bleeding so bad. We weren't able to tell. Um, we were trying to get her to cooperate with us so we could get a statement from her and get the information we needed to file the warrants for domestic violence. Actually on that case, I already had the guy in the back of my car. I showed up first. Um, there was mayhem in the street and, um, some other citizens were starting to take justice upon themselves and deal it to, uh, the perpetrator in this case. And, uh, <laughs> it's not funny, but, it's the stuff that we deal with. He basically came running to me and begging for help. I, I looked over at her, I looked at him, I could see the blood on him and I could see where it's coming from on her. So I swung around, put him in cuffs, put him in the back of my car. But anyway, I was trying to get the information I needed to um, put my case together for her benefit. And uh, she, it's not that she didn't want to cooperate. She just kept saying, you know, it's four in the morning, I'm supposed to be at work in two hours, I don't have time for this. Um, she kept saying that she was going to be all right. She just wanted him out of there. Stuff like that. Those are the ones where it's most important because this was such a violent attack. Um, it's very important that we get these people to cooperate in those cases so that we can actually get a conviction and get something to come of it. And often, um, the people who are like the real victims of these crimes that weren't doing anything wrong, um, or weren't uh, active participants in their own victimhood, um, they often are the ones that don't want to cooperate. And I had another one just a couple days ago where this woman had been repeatedly beaten over the last year. Um, she had been beaten with objects. She had been beaten with extension cords. She had been choked unconscious. She had permanent scars all over her body from what had been going on. Um, it took, basically, she was out in public and someone spotted her after one of her most recent incidents and basically forced her to sit down and call 911 uh, because this woman did not want the police involved. Um, she, it wasn't that she didn't want to cooperate it's just that she felt so helpless. She thought that nobody could do anything to help her. Um, she was so caught up in her own situation. She 
and she also there's a lot of these uh, the majority of time the the victims that are in the worst shape are women um, and there's a lot of women that got caught in this situation that think that they actually did something wrong they think it's their fault that this is happening to them um, therefore they don't want to cooperate with the police because they don't want to get the guy in trouble because he's already mad um, and that's why he assaulted them um, the good thing in those situations is that we don't need the victim to cooperate um, when it comes to domestic violence if I have probable cause to file the charge and I know who the individuals are I can file the charge so in a lot of those cases that's what we end up doing and there's a lot of advocacy and a lot of people that will reach out to those victims try to get them to cooperate in those cases um, with those ones that you know I consider like a good DV I don't know what the percentage is of people that actually fall through and cooperate on those those cases I hope that it's higher um, I really don't know what else to say about this topic it's just that uh, I wanted to take a minute to talk to everybody about domestic violence and how frustrating it can be for a police officer to respond to these um, because a lot of times there's absolutely no violence the peace police are just or the people are just trying to get the police there faster a lot of the times it's two active participants that are uh, mutually going at each other and one person just ends up getting hurt first so they call the police and then there's the third kind where you have a genuine situation where if the police don't intervene um, the victim is eventually going to get murdered um, and it's those victims who often are reluctant to seek help and that's extremely frustrating those are my thoughts for today thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon